Hi. Okay, I'm a little tardy. Sorry. Welcome to Behind the Scenes. I'm Angela Wolf, and it's great to see you. So today is a very, 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 very busy day, but I couldn't miss popping in with you guys because I got a lot of things to share with you. First off, I hope you had a great weekend. Look, I have finished my top. You're probably thinking that's why I'm tardy. What do you think? I think it turned out cute. You guys took the poll last week and 65% of you said to only do the lace for three quarter of a length sleeve. So that's what I did. So what do you think? It was super easy, super fun. It's I have an ITY, this is just an ITY knit, dark navy. It's on my website. I have a whole bolt of it over there. I might be using a little bit more of it because I love this color. The fabric sewed up beautifully. I made my ruche tee. So I did the twisted neckline, if you can see that. And I did ruching on one side, all the way down this side, and just part on this side. I think it turned out quite adorable. I like it a lot. So I finished that this morning, and then I ran home to run some errands, which I, my house is only like a mile down the road from my office, but I totally lost track of time. Judy Romano, you're proof of that because I was emailing you in between there. So all of a sudden, I said, I'll see you in a little bit. And I looked at the clock and went, oh my gosh, I got to get out the door. I'm going to miss everybody. <laughs> so I see you all popping in. and says it looks like I got tattooed. I know. Okay, so this is kind of cool. I did finish it, Susan. I know. And you did not vote for the three-quarter sleeve. It's okay. I'm glad it turned out great. Well, here was my thinking on this. So this top is stretchy, right? I mean, it's the ruche tee. It's a knit top. It goes into the wash. So I have so many tops that have the entire sleeve embroidered. And I thought, you know what? If I want to slide this on under a sweater or something like that and wear it for winter or summer, this would work because it's kind of like wearing a three-quarter length sleeve and this part is tulle. But you know, we talked about different colors of tulle fabric. This is navy tulle. A whole bunch of you bought this last week. I still have I still have a couple bolts left. I bought quite a bit of it because I love navy. But this is navy. Now, does my arm look blue? Don't answer that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have I do have a few bruises from fishing. That's what I was referring to. But yeah, no, I mean it's it looks like skin tone color. So I'm obviously not a smurf, so blue would not be my color, but I think it looks great. So another thing I decided not to do is if you look closely at the arm, this is embroidery. I did not trim this off, but you can't see it. And the reason I did not trim it is because if I wear this with a sweater or a jacket, I don't want these little guys to fold up. And I'm afraid if I cut this off that it's so frail that it'll fold up. Now, I'm going to do another top out of white with all white embroidery and sheer with a cotton. I don't know if I'm going to do a cotton or like the top. Let's see, where is it? If you can see it. Where did it go? Oh, that one back there. My Linda tunic out of a rayon, not a knit, a rayon with white and white embroidery just like this. And then I'm going to trim it because I think I'm going to embroider it with cotton thread and see if it kind of gives the whole look. <laughs> Trace, you thought these were wolf heads? You mean on my, do they look like, <laughs> okay, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, hi, Anne. Great to see you. That's so funny. Great to see you, Patty. So I can see you all rolling in. I do want to tell you today's show is not going to be a long one, but I am going to share a few things about a new pattern. I'm going to tell you how to pattern hack this sleeve here onto, this is, I'm using the Rouge T. You could also do it on the Rachel twin set, which would look really cute. <laughs> Thanks, Camilla. Hi, Jude. Great to see you. I see so many of you, you guys, this is like my favorite time of the week. I go back and read all of your comments later on too. So if you're watching this not live, be sure to say hi. Oh, I'm glad you didn't leave, Barbara. Okay, so I will try to take you outside later today. That's what happened last week, all right? We'll, Arnell wants to know if the lace will snag easily on your, on your arms. This is super soft, super, super soft. It's not snagging. It doesn't itch. It doesn't scratch. 
But remember when we were talking about soaking the lace in hot water with downy fabric softener? So I got the tip from Deborah Jones to use one portion of uh, fabric softener to 12 portions of water and spray it. And it helps to get everything out of the tool, all the stabilizer backing. Well, I told you guys a little while back that I wanted it to be super soft. And so I fill a bowl, like a big bowl that you'd have for popcorn with hot water and downy fabric softener, hot, hot water. And then I put my whole lace fabric in there after rinsing it. First, I rinsed it with hot water, put it in that bowl. I left it for, I don't know, maybe two hours yesterday. And I have to tell you, first, I rinsed this off. And then I let it dry because I didn't, I ran out of downy fabric softener. And I was going to make the top and I thought, I'll make the top and then soak it in downy later. Well, if there are any particles of that wash away stabilizer in here and I throw it in the dryer, it's going to stay. So I decided to wait, which is why I have the top on this week and not last week. I decided to, to wait and I just did this last night, put it in the downy, let it soak for a couple hours while I was cleaning the house, stuff like that, and then rinsed it really well and let it dry. First off, it smells amazing. <laughs> but secondly, it's a ton, a million times more. This is not proper English, but I'm trying to give you a visual here. A million times softer than before I put it in the downy. So I told you, I rinsed it and I let it hang dry. And then I rinsed it again and put it in downy for a couple of hours and then let it hang dry. Completely, you wouldn't even know they're the same fabrics. So go pick yourself up some downy if you're going to start making this lace because you soak this inside of that hot water with the downy and it's super soft. And as Deborah says, it smells fabulous. So, all right, I had a few little gifts come today. <laughs> Let's see if I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything. Thank you, Anne. I'm glad you love the... The white top sounds fabulous. I agree, Melody. Hi, Diane. <laughs> Laurel, you all thought they were tattoos. Well, this is, you know, what gets me in trouble when I wear these, when it covers up a whole sleeve. When you have a lot of color going on, it's awesome. And it's pain-free. And if you change your mind, you just change your shirt. I kind of like that. My removable tattoos. Okay, so I'm seeing all of you guys. Uh... Somebody just said, will it snag with the watch on? Nope, my watch is on, which I probably won't wear the watch out if I wear it like this because it looks cool without it, but it nothing is snagging on it. So I don't have a sharp watch. It hasn't snagged on my rings. Now, if I was using like with bridal and stuff like that, I usually take my rings off before I put the outfit on and take my rings off just in case. This ring here snags a little bit, but I had no problems today and I've taken the top on and off probably five times because I marked the hem, I did the twisted neckline and I wasn't sure, so I kept trying it on just to check the fit. So if that helps, yeah. I know you guys have to try it, it's super fun. Okay, let's see, those sleeves are amazing, says Marty, if you were to use fray check after you trim the edge, would that keep it from rolling? No, fray check just keeps it from fraying and makes it stiff. I don't want stiff. So good idea though. I like the way you're thinking. And I'm not saying that it would necessarily curl. I just don't want to take the risk and you can't see the edge. Can you? Can you tell that there's fabric right here? I can't and I'm like right here. So I'm assuming you can't either. Oh, I see. Yeah. I only have two nails painted. It's kind of a long story, but that didn't happen today. <laughs> when we were fishing the tournament this weekend, which we did come in fourth place, which was good considering on Sunday we had a terrible catch, but we still hung in there and moved up from fifth to fourth. But on Saturday while we were fishing, that I always bring my nail polish out, and if it's, if it's dead, like we're not catching any fish, I will start painting my nails. The guys get to vote on what color. I usually bring three or four bottles of polish. At, it's like just a lucky thing. And so I say, what color should I paint it? So they picked this color. And I barely got finished with two nails, and we started hitting fish nonstop the rest of the day, which was awesome. I did even nick one while I was netting, and 
I meant to paint the rest of the nails on Sunday during the tournament, but it was raining and about three footers. So I might have had nail polish all over my hands. So I decided to wait. I meant to paint them before I saw you, though. So in case you're wondering, no, I didn't forget their other nails. <laughs> all right. So a couple of things. I got a box of goodies today that I ordered, and I'm so excited. Vance and his team from Thread Cutters were back from traveling, and I ordered these before. You've seen, okay, you've seen this. This is my thread cutter. This came in a little while ago. I got a whole other batch, so I told you guys I only had a few left. Well, not anymore. So it comes in a nice bag like this, if you haven't seen this. A couple questions about this is some of you asked what size. Well, it's Velcro. So I'm actually opening another package because I keep leaving mine on the boat because I use it for cutting fishing line. <laughs> okay, so this Velcro opens and closes. So whatever size finger or whatever finger you want it on, it'll fit. So Wynn even had it on the other day because I tell him to quit chewing the fishing line with his teeth. Don't quit chewing my thread though, in case I don't have my thread cutters. So anyways, I keep it around all the time and you can see the logo. I know, cool. But I have something else and I don't know if you've seen this. I've talked about this before and when Vance showed me this when he made these, I said, well, can I have, can I get these with Angela Wolf logo as well? And he said, oh, sure, why not? So. Remember when I, this was probably a year ago, I was testing a new serger from Brother, and my only beef was that it did not have a side cutter. But how do you not have a side cutter? And I know with a serger, you can serge off and then cut your thread through the serger, but I want a serge and cut. Well, check this out. There you go. I'm not sure if it's focusing on me or that. This camera always has a mind of its own. And it has a little tab here that pulls off. And guess what? It's a flush mount. So it goes, it attaches to, if you have a featherweight machine or any sewing machine that does not have a thread cutter, it mounts right to the side. And there's a cutter on the top and the side, right here and right here, just like, just like the ring, except this one attaches. So I've already attached a couple of them to the boat in different areas where I'm always like trying to cut fishing line. But you can attach this to the side of your sewing machine. So if you have one of the machines that does not have a thread cutter, you can now. Now he has these in other colors too, but if you want the Angela Wolf one, I just put it on my website. So there you go. I think these are pretty cool. So this, you just pull off the back and it sticks in place. Very easy, kind of slick and I know someone said you should have said it said wolf pack. No, <laughs> it just is Angela Wolf, but you know what that means. <laughs> All right. I have more. Hold on. And I okay, I know you got you I saw someone say, are you gonna do a giveaway? I will be doing a giveaway with these, but not yet. Right now we have a giveaway that's live right now until next week. I believe until next week. I have to look at the date again, but I'm pretty sure it's until next week. For um the DIY style, their new T-square, that's 24 inches. So I was using that, if you saw my photos in the group today, cutting out this fabric. I love that ruler. It's shorter, easier to maneuver, but there's a giveaway right now. And if you go to, I put the link, if you're in the Fashion Sewing Club, the link is in there. If you go on a computer and go to my Facebook page on the left-hand side, it says contest. Click on that. I will be sending an email out on Friday with that link in case you missed it. All right, that's the news for that. And by the way, Vance, I love your packaging job. Pink tissue paper, that is me all the way. As you all know, when you get your Taylor's clappers. So there's the big box of thread cutters ready to go. All right, before I get into the launch of the Linda tunic pattern, I do have to, just gonna check your questions real quick. I can see you all saying, <laughs> Reen, I thank you for loving my thread cutter. And Reen, I have been sharing the photo of your jeans everywhere. I absolutely love them. Cindy wants to know, can you do, chip a tooth doing that? Ask me how I know. Yes, yeah, Cindy, you can chip a tooth cutting fishing line. Are you talking about cutting fishing line or cutting thread? Because Wynn has one tooth down here that 
keeps getting smaller. Now he's been doing this since he was like five years old. So I'm sure this didn't happen overnight, but I'm always getting on him because some of that fishing line is, is thick. So not anymore. I'm trying, I'm trying really hard, but sometimes old habits are hard to break. Oh, Sandy says, can you please hold your hands up so I can see your lace? All right, for all of you guys that were late, don't worry, I was late too. Here are the sleeves. So I'll talk loud so you can hear. This is what happened. I had my entire sleeve pattern, and this is how you'll, you would do this. You measure from your arm, your shoulder, to where you want your hem to go, all right? And compare that measurement to your pattern. So in my case, I think it was like 23 and a half inches. So 23 and a half inches from here to here. Then I measured my lace. So I wanted the hem to go a little bit longer. So that's why I marked all the way to here. And I measured from the lace. How high does the lace go? The lace goes to here. And then I needed to add a half of an inch seam allowance. But I, don't worry about the seam allowances right now. The first thing that I did was measure from here to here on the lace. I compared that to the pattern. So on the pattern, I measured from the hem up to where my lace is going to fall and just made a parallel line right across my sleeve pattern, all right? So then from this point up on the sleeve, I cut it out of knit, and from that point down, I cut it out of the lace. Now, on my pattern, I didn't need to draw a whole new pattern. All I did is, what I did is I folded the pattern in half, or folded the pattern right at this line. It's not really in half, it's about three quarters. And so I just folded the top half, cut out the knit, and made sure I added a half inch seam allowance. And then on the bottom part, I cut out the lace and added a half an inch seam allowance. And there you go. So the next step I did is I took the upper sleeve and the lace, I sewed it together, with right sides together, and then I pressed the knit and tool up into the sleeve right here. And then I ran a cover stitch over it to keep that in place. I did a French seam on the bottom of the lace because it's just neater. So I can share steps with that later, but that's pretty much how easy it is. So I'm glad that you got to see that. <laughs> Teresa says, uh, dental hygienist here, don't let Wynn use his teeth. I agree. I agree. Hey, Cindy, great to see you. You'll be flying in here in a couple of weeks. Hi, Karina. All right, so uh, I have a few more things and then we have got to do show and tell. So in case you missed last week's show, I did say that for the next two weeks until this whole giveaway is finished with DIY style, which is a whole nother week, then I'm going to be giving these away. And it's going to be going to <laughs> somebody who posts um, a picture of how you watch the Facebook Live show. So last week, I'm going to be sharing some of these photos because these were just fantastic. Take a photo of how you watch this behind the scenes live with me. I had photos, people watching on their tablets, on their phones, in their car except I'm hoping that you're listening more like a podcast. So I try to talk slower for all of you that don't have the visual here. And so I'm going to gather all these photos for the next two weeks. So this will be in June sometime. And all of these photos, your name will go into a drawing and you'll either win a thread cutters or the new Linda pattern, whichever one you prefer. All right. So my international friends, you can win a Linda pattern because this will probably cost more to ship than if you made it yourself, <laughs> but you can still get into this. So whatever you're, however you watch the show, just snap a photo and you can share it, either share it in the Facebook group, the Angela of Patterns Facebook group, or share it on Instagram and make sure you tag me uh, on Instagram. It's at Angela Wolf Fashion. That's how you tag me. And I'm saving all these. And then your name will go into a drawing. So you guys have to see some of these. These were just fantastic. I'm going to just share my screen here. Hold on one sec. Make sure I share the right screen. Here we go. And if you get a buzz or anything like that, let me know. All right? Because I know sometimes when I share a screen, it gets kind of crazy. Hey, Dobsy. I'm so glad you're here. Nice to see you. And thanks for popping in for a few minutes, even if you're in and out. <laughs> Kathleen. I have a lovely featherweight machine and would love one of those thread cutters. I'm going to Houston. Will you have them there? 
Uh, Kathleen, I will talk to all brands because that's who I'm going to be there with. So we'll have to make sure that we have them there. Or maybe you'll win one. Post a photo of you watching the live show and you never know. Uh, an estimation for the Linda PDF. I'll get into the Linda pattern here in just a second. Oh, Cindy, you did chip your teeth on fishing line. I'm so sorry. Did you have, like, did you break your tooth? Chip, I, well, it doesn't matter. Once it's chipped, it's a mess anyways. I can see you guys saying, I'm excited for the Linda pattern. I'll share about that as soon as I share some of this. Uh, you guys have to see some of these photos. Hold on. All right, so. Every, here, these are photos. I'll make myself small here so you can see this. This was photos of how I did this sleeve. In case you weren't in the group today and you missed this. So this is that shorter ruler, by the way, which goes, this is on the DIY style mat. Love this. So you can see my lace right here. This is the line on the pattern across. Now this is my Rouge T sleeve pattern. And I actually made a second pattern out of just, this is just cardboard that's shorter. So this is 24, I think this pattern's 24 inches and you can see that I extended the lace out a little bit further because I wanted it to go down into my hand. I lined up the center. This is the center of the sleeve. You can see my arrow here with this pattern here and that's how I was able to line up the lace. So I have the sleeve pattern underneath the lace. Okay, let's go to the next one. There's another side version. This is before I snipped all the hairs on the back of the embroidery. And this is after I sewed the lace to the knit. It's kind of dark, so you can't see it, but I sewed it here, pressed it towards the fabric, did a nice cover stitch to finish the edges and keep it in place, and then sewed the top together like I normally do. And that was it. I made the top in about, oh gosh, maybe 40 minutes total. Okay, so here's one from Donna, and I love this color. So she was thanking me for my two surgery classes on Craftsy, which uh, thank you for taking them. And she made these quick and easy projects and creative surging from that project. So these were really cute. It's a cotton gauze scarf. Isn't that fun? Good job on your surging, by the way. She, that's a very narrow rolled hem, which is just awesome. Very cute. So yeah, if you're looking for quick and easy projects, I do have a surging class on Blueprint. It's a couple years old, but those projects don't get old. They're like little purses, scarves, things like that. Okay, I see you. I can see a couple of comments rolling through here before I get to the next ones. Gert oh, Gertrude said she chipped her tooth cutting thread when she was 13. Oh gosh, it's amazing. I bet you if we did a vote, there'd be so many of you that said something, well, thread or fishing line. All my fishing buddies that are watching, I know, I've seen your teeth. We all have little chips right here from chewing that. <laughs> totally. Hi, Roanne. And Pam says, no, she cannot tell the tool is blue, which is good. Did you attach it while it was flat? I hope that that last photo helped that one, Pam. And Darlene says, I watch you on my phone. Perfect. And here's Kathleen from Scotland, all the way from Scotland. Welcome to our fashion. This is um, our sewing weekly show, which we have so much fun. I was a kid, luckily, before adult teeth. Oh, hey, Cindy, that is lucky. Linda, I should, <laughs> Linda says I should win the Linda pattern. My name is Linda. That's cute. So, Linda, I, you can, we can say that I named it after you. I named it after my mother, Linda, but you know what? Great name. I love that. Hi, Amy. Great to see you. Okay, I can see you guys. I'm um, just checking to make sure I have not missed. Trudy says she has a surgery class. Now take them too. Well, I would love to see your projects you do in that because whenever you're looking for a quick gift, oh gosh. See you, Esther. Have a wonderful day. Amy got blueprint for her Mother's Day. All right. I have seven classes in there, Amy, so binge watch. Yeah. Did I do a French seam on the lace? I did, Marianne. So what I did is I sewed this all flat first. Then I did the French seam on the tool part and then just started the inside seam right here with the serger. It was a little tricky, but it worked out well. How about opening bottle caps in the in the day? Oh, you're 
Angie, you did not do that with your teeth. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I've seen people do that, but you just made my mouth hurt. <laughs> that is a no, 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 no. <laughs> Hi, Janet. Great to see you. <laughs> All right. So we got more. We have more uh, photos. Hold on a second. Let me scroll down here. So the, here's one. And all of these I'm taking, but these, oh, uh, Cynthia, look at how cute your sewing room is. Those photos or those prints on the wall. I see my Taylor's Clapper over there. I see your room is so much fun. We could do I Spy. Well, you guys always say that about my studio too, but look at how cute this is. It's so clean and so neat. I love your cutting table. I love your buttons. Are those your paper? Those have to be your fabric weights. That's super cute. And I see all your machines. Hmm. Right, so are those vintage on the wall? I just have to know because I love that. All right. What else do we have? There was a few more in here I have to show you. Oh, Tracy. Hope you don't mind I share these because I love this. Tracy made my boot cut jeans and <laughs> I can see you guys. You're making me cringe about those teeth stories. Okay, no more teeth stories. <laughs> uh, Tracy, I love these jeans. And she was so cute. She said she kept fitting, 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 and she's not going to wear them because they have a gap in the waistband in the back. But I'm telling you, these jeans are so cute on you. Look at those pockets. I love that. So this is the gap that she's talking about in the bottom left. But you know what? The jeans fit you perfectly except that. And I have to be honest, I would be taking... I wouldn't even rip out the waistband. I would just put two little darts in the back, wear a shirt over it, and nobody's going to see it because those jeans are super cute on you. They fit great, minus the gap. <laughs> but you know what? For your next pair, um, if you need help with your waistband, let me know because I can show you how to make it just a little bit smaller. You don't have to adjust anything else about the pattern except for your waistband. So you've seen me when I've talked about making a curved waistband. If you just put a couple pins where you need that to get a little smaller, just pin it right in your waistband. So if your waistband was like this right now, when you're finished, it'll be just a little bit sharper. That's the only difference. But those look great on you. <laughs> Sandy says your butt looks great. <laughs> yes. So, okay, for anybody popping in, we are talking about sewing jeans here, all right? <laughs> Mind the gap. I know. I always put darts in the store-bought jeans. Yeah, you can't see them, and it's just an easy fix. But I love those pockets on you, So and great photos. Thank you for sharing that. So, great job. <laughs> Hi, Janet. Thank you for loving my sleeves. Marilyn says she enjoys watching on the computer and the phone while she's sewing. Discover new hints always. Awesome. All right, so let's see. I got more for you. Um, skip ahead. Oh, this was funny. Somebody, I usually, we, my sister usually ends up deleting a lot of these because we see a lot of these on Facebook and in the group, we try to just have like garments and stuff, but this was too funny. Please help, not homeless, just need money for my wife's crafting supplies. <laughs> Isn't that the truth, right? All right, Sandy. Sandy Cunningham, your sewing room is looking fabulous. So I love the color of the walls. That's actually the color in my old studio. It's kind of, it's a little bit greener than this color. It's so cozy and creative. I love it. And I love the flooring. You are going to love the flooring because when you drop pins and thread, you just have a quick broom to sweep up. It's so simple. I love it. I love it. So I had to share that. I, I don't know if I think I saw you in here earlier. All right. What else do we have? There's a few more things. This is always my favorite show and tell week. This is sometimes when I get a chance to see some of these. So Amy says, by the way, she loves your pockets. Back to the pockets. Store purchase would not look as good. I totally agree. And Cynthia, okay, about your photos in your, you drew those fashion illustrations in college in the 80s. You've got to be kidding me. You drew those? Let me go back there. Whoa, that's amazing. Those are fantastic. <laughs> you did clean up for the photo. <laughs> well, to get my place that clean, well, I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. But 
that looks really awesome. So you, that's really cool. You are very, very talented. I'm looking at those even closer. Great job, Cynthia. See, we all have awesome talents, some that we didn't even know about. Marcy, glad you, glad you popped in late. Better than never. Teresa says, your room is beautiful, Sandy. <laughs> all right. So let me just, that's pretty cool. All right. There was a few more on here. Deborah says, can you, can you also add a small piece of elastic inside the waistband? Yes, you can. But with that, you don't want to go too thin. If you, if you're trying to add elastic to the back. So let's just bring this up again to close that gap in. You want to add an elastic that's at least a half of an inch wide because jeans, jean fabric is a little bit thicker. Well, we all know that. <laughs> but you need a little bit thicker elastic. If you use the real thin elastic, it stretches out too much. And have you ever noticed when you're cutting elastic, have you ever tried the really thin, I'm talking like a fourth of an inch wide, so usually when you measure a waistband, you measure around yourself and you take out an inch or two until it's comfortable. When you use a thicker elastic, you take out a little bit, which is usually an inch or two. When you go to sew it in, the thinner elastic, you end up, it's all stretched out. It's like, is this not elastic or what? <laughs> so if you use a little bit wider elastic, like a half of an inch or something like that inside those waistbands, then you can actually use a little bit less elastic and it stays, it keeps its shape. So just pretend I'm holding elastic. I don't have any right here or I would grab some. Wait a minute. I'm so organized. Hold on a second. I have elastic. It's even labeled. I told you, I'm trying to get a little bit of OCD. My husband says I need a lot more. <laughs> But hey, it's worth trying, right? So ironically, here we go. Let me hide your comments so it doesn't take up my. So this is the width that I would probably use. This is about a half of an inch. So notice when you stretch, it goes back. Just like a knit fabric. You stretch and it goes back into shape. It looks great. Let's see if I can find one that's super thin. Oh, yes. All right, Carter, this is a hot mess. <laughs> this is super thin. So look at when it stretches, see how much, if you were to take the exact same amount. So let's just say, I'm going to measure on my keyboard, three keys. It stretches that far. Okay. If I measure three keys on this one, look at how far it stretches. Whoa, way further. So if you were to put this into a small jean waistband, First of all, by the time you get it to stretch to make it tight on you, it would have very little stretch left and then it would wear out. This you can fit in and has a, a lot tighter stretch. So half of an inch. How do you do that? You just put little slits in each side of your inside of your waistband. Insert this in to your waistband. Just use like a, well, there's a ton of devices, a bodkin or something to pull it through. So do two slits on each side of your waistband inside. Slide this through, stitch it right here. Do it like a stitch like underneath one of the um, belt loops. You won't even see it. And then pull this as tight as you need it to pull in that little area. That's a really good tip, by the way. And that's a good tip for a lot of these jeans that like they fit everywhere, but they keep falling down in the back, things like that. That's a quick fix for that too. I hope that helps. So... Anybody want to come and organize this elastic? The box is pretty organized, minus this whole batch here. I've got, I buy it in bulk because I use a lot of this. Here's another good elastic. Now, I think I might even have, oh yeah, we've got lingerie elastic. We could have a whole class on elastic. Oh, I've got sports elastic. Oh, sorry. Those that you, those of you that were not, uh, that were falling asleep, sports elastic. This stuff is great because it doesn't, it doesn't roll. It's comfortable. All right. Put the elastic away. 
I can see you guys asking a few more questions. Uh, Robin says, I'm watching from work at my South OKC store. Hey, wait, nice to see you down there. Not driving girls in the office crazy today. <laughs> Angie says that your drawings are gorgeous, Cynthia. Everybody's saying, Trudy says they're gorgeous. Julie says, yay, yay. Love the ironing board table. Absolutely. All right, Sandy, when you get that furniture, oh, you got a new Olivia sewing table. Mm. When you get all that, you have to share a photo so we can share. Definitely. Margaret popped in from Texas. We got Pam. Great to see you guys. What, uh, let's see. Here's a question. Glenda wants to know, would the half inch work better for bathing suits? You know, that's pretty thick. I Well, I don't make bathing suits. That's the one thing that I purchase because I just don't feel like going through the trouble. It bores me. I get, you got to be inspired to sew, and that doesn't. that's like sewing boat cushions for me. Boring. But on, I have sewn a few things with bathing suits just to repair them and things like that. The half inch is pretty thick for a bathing suit. I mean, that's a lot of fabric to go inside your legs or your hip or wherever. So I would say no. You know, the clear elastic works great for bathing suits from when I've done it. But I am not a pro at the bathing suit section at all. So take that with a grain of salt. Marcy says, yes, pull the elastic before measuring. Isn't that the truth? All right, Barbara says, you can also use elastic with buttonholes and place the buttons on either side of the elastic and feed the elastic through the waistband secured at the buttons You'd place this in the back of the jeans, FYI. Hey, that's a great tip, Barbara. That's another one to fix that little gap in the jeans. Lisa popped in. Zigzag design on your totes is a great idea. Looks cleaner. Uh, do you add twill tape all the way around the jeans waistband or just in the back? So, Amy, that's a good question. It depends on the jeans. So, let me move some of this elastic out of the way here. Okay. so. I usually add it all the way around the waistband because the waistband, part of it's on grain, part of it's off grain, part of it's, it's all on a curve. So I, but you have to be careful. If you take, if you ease the fabric too much to the twill tape, all of a sudden it's too tight. The only purpose of the twill tape is to prevent the top of the waistband from stretching out. That's the only purpose. Now, in some of my yoga pants, they use a thin piece of elastic. That would work just fine as well. And then you can stretch it and it goes back in place. I haven't done that yet, but I'm working on a skinny jean. First, I got to get out my Linda pattern and a couple of others, but I've been playing with a skinny jean pattern and the waistband's a little bit higher and the twill tape wouldn't be as comfortable because you want to have like, you don't want it to be sticking into your rib cage. So it really depends on the style of jean, the waistband and where it falls on your body. I have actually used twill tape just in the back, which was pretty comfortable. It kept the back in place and the front was able to stretch a little bit. So you really have all the options. Just make sure that the twill tape's not too tight. Have any of you done that? You know exactly what I'm talking about. You go to put the pants on and you're like, wait a minute, it's way too tight. Kind of like embroidering down your whole leg and didn't realize it took out half the stretch, right? Great to see you, Judy. Yvette wants to know, are your bins clear and you place the zigzag fabric inside and on the cover? Oh, so that's not zigzag fabric. This is a plastic bin and it came like this. That would give, that would be way too much time for me to cover these with fabric, but I love how you're thinking. So no, these were plastic. I think I found these, I don't know, probably at Michael's, something like that. So I bought matching ones and then I used my P-Touch labeler to label. Kind of cute, aren't they? And they're plastic. I started buying plastic a long time ago after my flood through my ceiling about, I don't know, 10 years ago or something like that. So I don't use a lot of box bins anymore. I usually use plastic. You just never know. Nancy says, good tip. Liz says, how long do you keep elastic? I just inherited mom's, probably as far back as the 60s. Wow, Liz. Well, okay, you've heard my bathing suit story from the 80s. 
which I still have. Yes, I know. It's my one that I only have at the cottage, and I'm not sharing the whole story to all of Facebook, but <laughs> I will tell you that the bathing suit says 1989, mm -hmm, and it is what? Way past 1989 at this point, but it's a one piece. And I had it for years. Well, I still have it, but for years and years, it fit fine. But the elastic started to wear out, so I'd have to keep lifting up the shoulders. So now I would say the bathing suit started, let's just say it started as a one piece that was like this long. It is now like officially probably this long. And I just keep taking up the shoulders and taking in the sides a little bit. But the elastic is completely rotted out of it. I'm not getting rid of it because I probably will end up getting buried in it someday. If Wynn's playing a joke on me when I pass away, that probably will happen. But don't let that happen. <laughs> Anyways, the elastic completely rotted out. So the 60s, when you stretch the elastic, does it go back into place? Because unless they, it was stored in plastic Ziploc bags, I'm not sure. And if it still is good, then I want to know what brand it is because that is some good elastic. <laughs> so you have to let us know. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, you guys, I'm moving on. Sandy said she'll share, share photos. And Cynthia says, thanks, guys, for all the kind words. You are so welcome. All right, toddler jeans and pants have that type of slit and elastic waist. Oh, yes, they do, with the slit with the buttons. They do that on men's pants, too, by the way. Hi, Denise, great to see you. I hope you don't mind. I saw that you shared a photo of the Rouge Tea on Instagram, and I shared it to my story. So for those of you that are on Instagram, if you tag me and I see it, I usually share it to my story to show off your beautiful work. So hope you didn't mind on that one. But you tagged me, so I assumed it was okay. <laughs> I always like to show off what you're doing. Melody says she loves your sewing room. And Sandy says, is clear elastic chlorine resistant for swimwear? You know what, Sandy? There's so many different brands that I don't even want to answer that because I don't know for sure. I've had no problem with it. It does eventually wear out. That's why I don't use it for ruching. I use twill tape for ruching. But um, that's a good question. So anybody who is an elastic expert, if you have an opinion on that, share it with us. Because that is a good question. I don't know. I So far, I don't make bathing suits yet. But if anyone has, did your bathing suit fall off <laughs> after you got into the pool a few times? <laughs> that's a technical question, right? Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right. Sandy says, if you can find it, rubberized elastic is great. Yes, that stuff is great. That is really good stuff. And if you can find it, that's a big thing. Robin says, bathing suits are pretty easy to sew or design. Yeah, they are. But you know what? They're so fun to buy because <laughs> I don't buy anything else. But you know what? I can tell you what's going to happen right now. I'm going to go bathing suit shopping this year and I'm going to find nothing. And next thing you know, I'm going to be making bathing suits. So don't say never, never. It's just at this point, shoes, handbags, and bathing suits and lingerie are my, uh, what at least I can go purchase. All right. Yvette says, I think that is what I think that is something, the elastic for children's pants and put a button so you can adjust it. Yes, yes. I got what you meant now. Pam says, I soak the elastic and find it always shrinks. That's interesting, Pam. You soak it in hot water, cold water. What? Give me some more details on that. No, Glenda, I don't at this point, but why don't we get to the... Um, Linda pattern before we run out of time. So yes, the Linda tunic pattern has launched pre-launch. I have my, uh, let's see, it's on here somewhere. Hold on a second. While I'm bringing that up, I want to show you something more. 
It'll take one second. So squirrel on a minute, not to the Linda yet. I got There was a couple more photos in here you guys have to see in case you miss these. Oh, by the way, Mary Lou, happy anniversary. What'd you say, 35 years? Awesome. We're very happy for you. Okay. Here's Glenda. Look at your cool sewing office. I see the rouge tea. I see the serger. That is the coolest couch ever. That looks so comfortable. <laughs> I love it. So very cute. Okay, there's a few more. This was Celeste. Watches on her tablet. This was a, so funny. Some of you have included these on your sewing machines. These are awesome. Don't sew over your finger, though. I don't want to take responsibility. <laughs> All right. We saw Janice. Janet, we talked about your, um, I didn't mean to say Janice, Janet, we talked about your top last week, which is gorgeous, but I saw there was one more. Here we go. In case you missed these last week, Susan had these. I showed some of the others last week live. So these are some of the ones that showed up after that. So Susan, this one warms my heart tremendously because you know I love cats. And these are, oh my gosh, you guys, these are so precious. You guys know I want a cat so bad, but my allergies just aren't allowing it at this point in my life. So I have decided that I'm fostering in all of Susan's via Facebook Live. <laughs> so Susan, tell the kitties hi because you made my day. All right. So you guys post your photos for the next few weeks. I'm going to be sharing them. I'm putting them all in the group and somebody's going to win something fabulous. All right. To the new pattern. Here you go. The PDF is not available yet, but I will show you the, here it is. See if I can make this big. So that's the Linda tunic. This has been a little bit um, interesting because this is the sew along that I'm doing on It's So Easy. So if uh, It's So Easy has a, they have their own YouTube channel which they have uploaded all the videos from every season, by the way. So if you're into binge watching, go to their YouTube channel. If um, I am actually going to be posting the videos, I've already posted them in the Fashion Sewing Club. So if you're in the Fashion Sewing Club, you'll see a section that says Linda Tunic Sew Along. You do not have to be part of the Fashion Sewing Club, obviously, to be in the Sew Along, but there will just be more details in there, and then our live Q&As are in there. But... I will be posting the videos, the same videos for the sew along on my YouTube channel, but I'm doing it as a watch party so we can watch them together. And then if you ask questions, I will be watching it with you and I can answer. So I thought that would be really fun. I will be posting that schedule on Friday. If you want the Linda patterns for pre-order, those in the Fashion Sewing Club already knew about this. And for... Those that aren't in the Fashion Sewing Club, you're still going to hang out and sew with us, I hope. This is the coupon code. Linda, capital letters, L-I-N-D-A, two zero. And that will get you 20% off. If you're not in the Fashion Sewing Club, you get 20% off of the pre-order. And that will expire on June 10th because that is when the Sew Along will start. So if you pre-order, you get a discount. Now, right now, the only thing up on the website AngelaWolfPatterns.com is the paper pattern. But if you would like the PDF, that will be up soon. I don't have someone, I think Glenda asked me what day. It will be soon. I just have to print it all out and tape it together. And I'll try to do it before Memorial Day weekend. Otherwise, it'll be next week. So the pattern will be shipping, though, on June 5th. I had to remember, it was actually June 6th that was coming in. And I don't, Thursdays I'm always so busy. So I made it June 5th. So I thank you all that have already pre ordered. You're awesome. And if you're looking for the pattern, this discount code for 20% off will be good all the way up until June 10th. So that's a few weeks, but that gives you a little time to, if you want to watch the videos, if you want to see what's going on. And the watch party will start on June 10th that week. So I'm looking forward to hanging out with you guys, making a Linda tunic. So I have a couple behind me. The green one, this one, hold on. Here we go. I 
don't want to mess up any of my cords. Okay, how about this side? <laughs> There we go. How's that? <laughs> Let me just fall into my chair. This is a rayon chalice. I bought it at Vogue Fabrics. Don't forget, in the Fashion Sewing Club, Vogue Fabrics has given us a discount. So I can leave you links to this fabric. Uh, but this fabric, I just pulled it out of a suitcase. It is completely wrinkled and a hot mess. But I've had this hanging just for maybe during the show. And a lot of the wrinkles have already come out. So I love the color. It washes and dries beautifully. The neckline, very simple. This one has no buttons. It's a little bit longer in the back than the front. A very cool style. This is what I was trying to show you guys last week before I lost you live with the flowers. So, and had to run to my meeting. I made it, no tickets. But I'll be, I'll be going through a lot of questions for this, helping sew along. We are going to have a lot of fun, and there are a couple of pattern hacks that we're going to be doing at the end, which is my lace sleeve, not this one, but I just showed you how to make this one, but the lace sleeve that you've seen me wear with the black top, and then also how to change your sleeve to add a cuff to this. So we've got a lot of fun things, lots and lots of fun. So I'll just scroll through your questions real quick if you have any. Chris says, I'm watching in my South Carolina bedroom. First off, I know your weather is beautiful there right now, so congrats. She's sitting with her brother in front, not her brother, but her brother's sewing machine <laughs> and her serger right next to me making a rouge tea. Awesome. Thank you, by the way. I, You know, the rouge tea is my absolute favorite pattern. I go to it all the time. It's just comfortable. It fits underneath jackets. You can turn it into a tank top, whatever. It fits great. And once it fits, you can just pattern hack the, the heck out of it. All right, let's see. <laughs> Glenda says, sounds like you need ruching. I missed that. I missed what you guys were talking about. Does the elastic crack when it's stretched? That's a big one. That's a good way to know if it's if it's uh, getting old. Oh, Jude, you want to know when it's going to be available in PDF? Soon, very soon, but not quite. Because first I just had, everything just went to print. And then I just need some time to tape all the pieces together and make sure it looks good. The PDF takes a little bit more work. After, I always do the print part first because that takes two weeks to print and ship. And then I work on the PDF because everything has to be reformatted. So soon, very soon. And I cannot wait to see what you do with this. Jude, you've been making some awesome things lately. Sandy says, in Florida, elastic goes wonky very quickly. <laughs> And when you stretch it, it never goes back. <laughs> well, there's some truth to that. And Terry definitely agrees. It depends how it was stored, but elastic doesn't last. My old elastic rots and breaks when stretching. Well, it's no different than rubber bands. Have you ever had rubber bands around cords and stuff like that? By the way, that's what I was looking for. Somebody posted this cord. Hold on a second. If I can find it. Okay, here it is. Hold on a minute. First off, Mary Smith. This is Mary Smith's big screen TV going on with the uh, Facebook Live. And I saw, I think Melody posted this. I laughed right out loud when I saw this, Melody. I was trying to show this last week when we were talking about winding a bobbin. And I didn't have one bobbin that was all messed up like this. And then you had this. I needed this photo. <laughs> that was hilarious. But okay, two more things. There's the thread cutters booth. I said hi, Vance, but that's not Vance. I'm trying to see if that's his brother. I couldn't get close enough. But anyways, they had a booth at market. So, uh, okay. Karina, this was awesome. I just have to know what this is. I showed you guys last week how if I'm using a small spool of thread like she's using, it's low. And sometimes it gets wonky when it comes out and it breaks and it drives you crazy. So she put her, <laughs> is, I just have to know, is that gum that you're sticking that to the machine with? For those of you that are listening as a podcast and not uh, watching, you have to picture she has the front of her sewing machine, there's thread, and she has her brush that you would normally brush your, your not your teeth, but brush, <laughs> clean your machine out with. And it's stuck to the front of her machine. And so she has the thread coming out straight, just like I showed last week if you were using your finger right there. 
But what is that? Is it Play-Doh? Is it gum? Is it, you have to let me know. Uh, if I, I, I know you're on here, but I don't know if you're still here. I know some of the girls have to go to work afterwards. So if I see the answer to this, somebody else says they use big clips. And I just thought that was super cool. All right. And there was, oh, goodness. Who is this one? Mary Ann. Oh, looks like she is. Hold on. I got to put my glasses on to read this one. I see. For now, I'm watching from what I call caregiver's chair while my husband heals from knee replacement surgery. Oh, gosh. Of course, with Buddy at my side. Oh, she so enjoyed the felting embellishments yesterday. Love the dog, by the way. How cute is that? Oh, my gosh, your dog is beautiful. And tell your husband I hope he feels better. And tell him that I hope he has a lot of patience if he has to listen to my show each week, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hopefully, I'm kidding. Diane, your office looks amazing, by the way. I see I'm over here on the laptop. Love your curtains. That's a new one. I didn't see that one. And then, of course, we saw Reen's jeans from last week in case you missed those. So the needle felting. Oh, I just love those jeans, Reen. Needle felting. I Did I find my needle felter? No, I did not. So I talked to Brian from Brother, and I said, Brian, I don't know if I can go through 100 boxes, and I have got to do some needle felting. So I told him to give me a few more weeks. I'm going to look. Otherwise, I might borrow somebody's. So hold on. I have to show you something. Let me get rid of my elastic. So... I just did one little corner of needle felting. This is that fabric I told you last week, the Silk Dupioni that I want to needle felt. And here is my little corner. Can you see that? It actually brings the black fibers out of this blue. I love it. So I'm going to have to really be patient for a week. It's Memorial Day. I won't be sewing anyways over Memorial Day, but... Didn't that turn out cool? So you can see how it puckers the fabric all around it. So I won't do this. I'll do this live as soon as I find my needle felter or borrow somebody's for a little while. And I'm going to do the needle felting everywhere. And then I press the fabric. And then I might embroider over that to make just beautiful piece of fabric. And then I'll decide what I'm going to make. Probably an Evelyn jacket, something like that. I know. Very fun. Amy says, yes, they make swim elastic. Always rinse your suit after being in a chlorine pool. That is true because it always fades. Because I wear my bathing suit in the hot tub all the time, and those things fade very quickly. Barbara said she made a few suits out of regular elastic and had no problem. All right. One lady pranked her husband by sewing it together with water-soluble thread. Sandy, I know you're not talking about me because we laughed about this last year <laughs> that I was going to do that to win. I didn't do it, but I thought that would have been really, really funny. Maybe you're the one that gave me the idea. A few of you had that idea, which I still think would be hilarious, but I didn't do it. Okay. Let's see. Aren't you supposed to steam elastic after sewing it in? Hmm. I've not heard that one. Nope. I've never done that. W what would... Laura wants to know... Do you steam elastic after sewing it in? I would say no, but I usually press all of my fabric after I've sewn it. So I don't know. But there's a gazillion times types of elastic, so I don't know what application you're talking about. Maybe there's something that I haven't heard of. Yvette says she loves Glenda's space. And Linda's watching from work. Well, you guys, do you have any questions? Uh, Lynn says she bought the Linda pattern and watched all the videos. Awesome. So I just gave you that coupon code. If you're not in the Fashion Sewing Club, this is a coupon code. If you're in the Fashion Sewing Club, there's something different in there. So make sure you pop in there. But if you're not in the Fashion Sewing Club right now, there is still that 14-day free trial. If you'd like to test it, we'd love to have you with join us. So feel free. Uh, but if you already pre-ordered because you are one of those people who are so awesome and saw that the pattern was available before I even hardly breathed and got it up there, which did happen, <laughs> um, I tried to monitor that people were using a coupon code. If you did not use a coupon code and you're watching this, all you have to do is send me an email and I will rebate. 
your discount. And also, since these patterns are not shipping until June 5th, which is still like, I don't know, two weeks away, if you decide that there's anything that you can't live without, like tool fabric, there is a code for fabric right now that is, I believe, you guys have to help me out here, but I think this is it, Fabric 20. I left that open for a little while because I know people watch this on YouTube later. So Fabric 20 is for fabric. If there's any fabric that you purchase, this is an ITY knit. This is in the store. The tool is in the store. You got the embroidery designs, all those things. If you've already pre-ordered the Linda pattern and you order more things, all you have to do is use this coupon code for the fabric. The Linda 20 or the Fashion Sewing Club discounts won't work. They're separate. So if you purchase fabric separately, all you have to do is leave a note. Uh, I already pre-ordered the Linda, combine my shipping, and I will refund your shipping when I ship your package out. So because usually you, uh, the ship, whatever you pay for shipping, I can usually qu fit quite a bit into one box for that. So it's going to automatically charge you shipping. Just leave a note and I will refund that. So I hope that makes sense. Oh, uh, is it so easy still on PBS? Yes, Cindy, it is. So those that watch the It's So Easy on PBS, I believe that season 17 launched last weekend or this weekend, one or the other. Every PBS station is different, but if yours is one that gets all the newest of the new, then you will be watching the Soul Along on Saturday mornings or whatever day you have It's So Easy. Some of you guys get it on Wednesday now too. It's also on Create TV. Cynthia, thank you. Phyllis, you have a plus size. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I have finally, now the Evelyn has not launched in the plus size yet, but I did get the Linda. And that is in size, there are two different groups of sizes for the Linda pattern. So, and you, when you order, it asks you, which one do you want? Misses, which goes from size zero to size 18. That's a whole different body cut than the women's plus. The next sizing is 16W. Uh, and I think that goes to 32 or 34W. I don't remember offhand, but it, it covers quite a range. If there's something you need besides those ranges, you have just let me know. And maybe I can grade it a little bit larger or smaller for you specifically. So we will see. So thank you for asking that. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, a lot of you are asking that. Patty says plus sizes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's one of the reasons that it took me a little bit longer to launch the Linda. The pattern has been finished since February, but I did not want to launch this one just like the Kate skirt. That also goes up to plus sizes. All of my knits do. So there's only a couple of patterns right now that don't have that plus sizing, but all the patterns from now to the future will have it. And I will be going back to finish the Evelyn and the jeans. So I just wanted to check on the fit and make sure that it fit good. Can I add to my previous order? Yes, you can, Glenda. You just add away and leave me a note and I will uh, refund your shipping. So thank you for asking. And if you can always email me, guys, if you have any problems too. Cannot wait to play with it. I agree. <laughs> Ships not goes. <laughs> Ships not goes, Glenda. I think that went with your last question, but <laughs> that just sounded really funny. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Oh, no, Joanne says she's watching from hospital. Her son is very sick. Joanne, special prayers for your son. I hope he feels better soon. That doesn't sound good, but um, hopefully we're bringing a ray of sunshine to you guys in the hospital today from all of your sewing friends from all over the world. So everyone, give Joanne some well wishes for her son. Hopefully he'll be okay soon. <laughs> Jude, love the Linda tunic. Thank you, Jude. Coming from you, that is an honor because you have been making some fabulous clothes. Thank you, Denise. And don't worry, guys. I will be giving a, having a giveaway for the Linda. And I will be uh, giving away one pattern from all everyone who pre-orders is going to get a surprise. So there's going to be, I've got a lot of specials to give away coming in June. So you'll just have to keep an eye out. If I can't watch on the 10th, will I be able to catch up? Oh, yes, Trudy. What I'm going to do for the sewing schedule for the sew along it's, I've already posted it all and it will automatically start on a certain date. So if I'm traveling, if I'm stuck on a boat, if I'm out of internet zone, it won't matter because it will launch on the days that I tell you. With the video, there's going to be a watch party 
And then I'm going to have some special live Q&As in the Fashion Sewing Club group. And also in our Angela Wolf Patterns group, which many of you are in already, we'll be having some fun things there too. So I'm making sure everyone's included and just the Fashion Sewing Club gets a few extra perks. But you'll be able to watch all the replays, anything like that. So don't worry. You don't have to scratch your schedule. <laughs> but it's always fun when you join <laughs> on your 1989 bathing suit. Mm-hmm. Looks like a very comfortable top. Hey, Janet said she bought some nice creamy white jersey knit to make my rouge tea. That sounds fabulous, except I would have such a hard time, Janet, not hand dyeing that white jersey fabric. Whew. I haven't been dyeing fabrics lately because my washer and dryer at the office aren't hooked up yet. Probably a blessing. How do you make a rouge tea sleeveless? Marcy, that's a great question. So this is my last question, and then I have to run because I have a meeting at 3. But how do you make a rouge tea? So this is the rouge tea, right? And those in the Fashion Sewing Club, don't forget we have a live show tomorrow, and I will uh, lay out the pattern for this if you have more questions. But this is my rouge tea. I've got the twisted neckline. So if you want to make this sleeveless, all you have to do is on your pattern, obviously you leave the sleeves off, I usually trim away the seam allowance, which is a half, half of an inch through the arm's eye. And then you have a choice. Do you want to turn in the raw edge and just use a cover stitch machine, which I do that a lot. That's a fast, easy, easy tank top to do. If you do that, all you have to do is trim away your seam allowance and make your top. Turn under this raw edge and do a cover stitch. If you're going to add a binding, then you're going to trim away a little bit more than your seam allowance. So your half, half inch seam allowance, you're always going to take it, that part away. If you're going to add a binding to the armhole, you need to measure, fold the binding in half. I usually give myself a half of an inch seam allowance on the binding. So how wide is the binding that's going to go into your armhole? So I'm trying to think, typically I take a, I cut two inch wide binding and fold it in half. So that's one inch after it's folded in half that leaves a half of an inch to be exposed and a half of an inch for my seam allowance. I sew that in place. So I would then, in that case, if I used a one inch binding, not to be confused, cut it two inches wide, fold it in half, which leaves one inch, half of an inch for a seam allowance, half of an inch for to be exposed. Then I would remove the seam allowance plus an extra half of an inch out of this whole arm's eye area. So then when I attach that binding, it's not too high under my arm. That's it. Otherwise, you sew everything else exactly the same. So Marcy, great question to end the show with. I will go back and read your comments. So if you guys are popping in, um, I see that um, Miss Jones says, will you be at the OSQE in Fredericksburg this year? No, I will not. I will miss you though. That was a great time last year. Uh, are there any sleeve variations on the Linda top pattern? No, there are not, but there are three pattern hacks that are included in video. So super easy to do. Great question, Karen. Um, it's a long sleeve that rolls up with the tab on the side. Yes. And some of you guys asked that you wanted a dress form for that. Uh, not a dress form, but a dress. You want to make it longer. I was going to go ahead and have the pattern for a dress as well but it didn't make any sense because it's very easy to alter. So that will be a pattern hack as well. The more of the sleeve stuff that I add and things like that, the pattern just gets too big. It's too thick and too heavy to ship. So for this, I just made it simple. Well, as simple as you can be with a lot of pattern hacks that will be available. What thread to use sewing with silk, please? Judy, I would use, I have a few options. I use silk thread quite often. When I'm sewing with silk, I use woolly nylon and woolly poly as a serger thread on the inside. It's soft. I also use um, just universal thread, but you use a narrower stitch length. Yes. All right. Pam says, yes, link, please. How about in your next set of embroidery designs, having a design that goes around the, the plaque or collar? Pam, you must be having osmosis in my computer. Already working on that. <laughs> and I can tell you it has to do with the jacket. 
Great idea on the thread, Angie says. All right, guys, if I didn't have to run, I'd hang out with you all day. But those in the Fashion Sewing Club, I will see you tomorrow. I don't, let's see if I have the time up here. Is that, I, my calendar won't open because I don't have my password. Don't you love that? Oh, you want to know why? Because my laptop crashed last Thursday. And I thought I was going into deep depression because I was going to have to spend another two grand on another computer. But has anybody ever bought a computer from Costco? Those guys rock. That's all I got to say. I have purchased a computer from Sam's Club. They were awesome. This laptop that I have is three years old. It's a very powerful one. It was very expensive. And they do finally wear out. But it it went blank, but it wasn't the hard drive. And I knew that because I've blown a hard drive before. And I called them and do you know that they walked me through troubleshooting? And I knew enough of the lingo to understand how to do it. And boom, I lost everything on it, but I have everything backed up to the clouds and to hard drives. So I don't care about that. I just wanted the computer back. So I've been reinstalling software. So when I reinstalled my Outlook, all my computers want to sync to each other. And I don't know my password by heart. So if anyone knows what time the Fashion Sewing Club live show is tomorrow, post that here for everyone and I will post it later. Uh, Denise, where do we find the Linda pattern? Go to Angela Wolf Patterns. See if I can. Dot com. It's on there. And the link or the coupon code is capital letters L I N D A. Two zero for twenty percent off, and that will be good until they ship out. Pam said it is on here the same time and same day. Same time and same day. I know it's tomorrow at one thirty. Hmm. Okay, tomorrow one thirty p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, have a wonderful day. Day. I hope you guys are enjoying the sun. It was like 40 degrees here this morning, and now it is sunny and 80. Too bad I got to go to a meeting. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your thread cutters, those that got them. And I will see you either tomorrow for the Fashion Sewing Club, or I will see you next Wednesday on Behind the Scenes Live. Until then, you guys have a great Memorial Day. Stay out of trouble. I don't know if you're going boating, but stay safe. And I'll be popping in, though, because I have a lot of things to share, so I have a lot of photos to share with you. So, And I will always try to share my Sunday sunrise or Sunday sunset. It's usually a sunrise because I'm usually asleep before the sunset <laughs> after fishing all day. So bye, you guys. Have a great week.